I'm going one of these mornings to a land with never a night. Oh, yes, I'm going one of these mornings where a robe of spotless white. One of these mornings I'll be flying high. One of these mornings I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going one of these mornings to a land with never a night. Oh, yes, I'm going one of these That's, uh, that's our concert coming up. It's good to see everybody. Um, that's the, the post that's pinned on our Facebook, and it has the Facebook event that we have, and it also has uh, that, that link there will take you to a, a spot where you can say, hey, I want four tickets, or I want two tickets, or I want one ticket. So uh, that, that all will come to me, so I'll, I'll get that. We're, we're starting to pick up in the, uh, in the ticket sales. Um, so we're, we're about two weeks out ish. So this is when Nelson usually starts planning. They usually plan about two weeks ahead, uh, unless you have kids and you have to plan longer than that. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's good. We got Sue, Sue from New York. I don't know, Sue, your, your picture's gone. So I don't know what's going on with that, but, uh, it is good to see everybody, uh, we had a, a funny thing happen, and I'll, I'll tell that at the business meeting, but I'd been announcing the business meeting, but I'd forgotten that I hadn't announced it online in the, on the camera. So I called Ellie yesterday. <laughs> I was like, this is totally my fault, but... And uh, she's like, well, I have it right here. So she's always prepared. But uh, it, it was just, it was something that funny that, that happened. But uh, we do have our prayer warriors meeting um on tuesday we're studying the book of hebrews i think we're in hebrews what 12 and uh then we're gonna we'll be eating something chicken macaroni is like a casserole um and just to let you know chicken mac on the heavener scale is a 10 that's why it keeps getting made so it's it's really good uh so i think i got i, got, I think i got volunteered for dessert <laughs> by a little munchkin up back there but uh but it is good and uh it's good to see everybody here in person and and those that are online i'm catching you as you come on uh but uh we are gonna have for those that uh this is this will be a city elders announcement is that we're gonna ha we're share the movie 2000 mules um on uh this coming friday and uh so that's that's something that uh, that it's information. Come watch it if you want to, and and take the information and and make your own decisions there. Um, if you need one more information about it, just see me later. I can I can give that to you. And then again, we have the Cressman and Ricky Holland concert the following Saturday. Um, got Frank and Ella. Good seeing you guys. Boom. I like being able to interact. I'm glad I got this back up here. But uh, are there any other announcements? Now we're going to shift to praises, prayer requests, testimonies. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I started, when I started coaching way back when, uh, there was a group of girls that, that kind of grew up together, and they were they were really good. They ended up winning the state championship, and probably one of the best teams uh, that I ever been a, was a part of. And I was a small part. I was like a just a volunteer. But uh, the point guard there was uh, was Jennifer Knuckles, and her dad passed away. Uh, her dad was a Buffalo Gap graduate. Same, we, we were we were fellow alumni, and uh, he was just the thing I remember about him is he gave more than he got, and that was the that's the the takeaway that I remember. I haven't seen Bill forever. Yes, sir.
Yep, so keep the Knuckles family in our prayers. Yes, um, for those of you who may not know, I don't know who's is that uh, uh, Wayne's uh, brother-in-law, Larry Breeden, uh, passed away uh, this, this week um, due to a heart issue. So, uh, so be, in, be in prayer for their family. Um, I think the, the arrangements are, are, have been made, but it's going to be later on because people are getting back in town. So uh, I'll let you know when, when that is. But uh, continue to keep Linda and, and the family in our prayers uh, as it's never easy. It's never easy. Um, also, we want to remember uh, Kelly and Lucy Kale. Uh, just Sue put it on there for pain relief. Um, we know all the stuff that Kelly went through. Um, just be praying for her and Lucy as well. And I think, I think Lucy's a, either Lucy's a sister or an aunt. I forget. Forgive me, Sue, if you could let me know on, in the comments. I want to say sister, uh, but uh, I've only been up there once in New York. Uh, but all right, any other? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Madison is in Florida. She's gonna fly home to pack up to fly back to to Florida. She's going to a uh, a college. Uh, she's going to visit a college down in Florida or somewhere, and she needs stuff from from her uh, thing. Ah, I gotcha. I gotcha. Uh, Lucy was a, is a stepmom to uh, to Kelly. Thank you, Sue. All right. Um, any other? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, uh, uh, prayers for me and Kathy. I talked with her, and uh, things aren't going well. We put all for her, and uh, hopefully she stays connected. Continue to keep uh, Donna's Aunt Kathy. We've been praying for her for, for a while. Continue that she stays connected, and, and the things uh, that God would use the things that are happening to draw her closer uh, to him, or draw her to him. So anything else? All right. Well, let's go to Lord in prayer, and then we'll uh, and then we'll uh, sing a little bit. Your grace, heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that you have done and that you are doing. Father, we want to lift you up. We want to praise you. We want to honor you because uh, you are worthy. You are worthy, Father. We we come today humbly before you because you tell us to. We can't come into our in our own strength. But we can only come. Through the blood of Jesus. And the Bible says, well, we need to come into your gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. And we should have praise on our lips. And Father, help us to do that. As we come today in intercessory prayer for those that are on our prayer list, we lift up the Knuckles family. Uh, as the loss of Bill is, was sudden. And Father, I pray that you would be with Jennifer and her family and Charlotte and, and Chuck and, and all, the, all, her, all their family. Uh, Father, be with the Breedens, be with, uh, be with Linda and, and, and her family, Lord, as the loss of Larry was sudden. Um, Father, be with, the, be with Aunt Kathy, Donna's Aunt Kathy. Uh, be with Lucy and, and Kelly, Lord, that, that, that you would uh, manage their pain levels, Lord. Uh, we have travel mercies for Madison. Um, pray that everything goes smooth, smoother than it did on the way down. Uh, so, Father, we just so thankful for those that are unable to be here. Father, we just want to lift you up. We want to praise you. We want to honor you. Father, we just uh, uh, pray that, that for safety for, uh, during, the, during the weather, uh, as driving conditions can go from really, really uh, clear to stormy and, and a little bit of nothing, Lord. Uh, Father, thank you for letting us get out as a family, my family, as we headed out to the zoo the other day and just had a, just had a wonderful time as a family. Uh, Father, we want to lift you up. We want to give you the rest of the service. And Father, just whatever you lead, we'll follow. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. All right, we're going to open with a hymn. We're going to open with hymn number 705. 705. 705. Stand if you're able. We'll sing the bulleted verses. When peace like a river attendeth my way. 
When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Thy sin, O oh, the bliss of this glorious thought my sin in part but the whole is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more praise the Lord praise the Lord oh my soul it is well It is well, it is well with my soul. Last verse. And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sigh. My sin back as a scroll. The drop shall resound and the Lord shall descend, even though it is well with my soul. Thank you so much. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well. Thank you so much. You may be seated. All right. Thank you, Rosemary, for playing. We never want to take that for granted because that is just, it, it, it adds so much. So just thank you for that. I don't know about you. <laughs> for those who are, not, that are, that are watching online, everybody is sitting this way today. <laughs> hey, Frank Ella, your whole side of the sanctuary is, is empty. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, we do miss you guys. And uh, just, just keep Frank in your prayers. He got, got tests and you know how it's going. So just continue to keep them in your prayers. And there's several unspoken prayer requests that maybe we didn't mention as an unspoken prayer request, but. But we want to make sure that we continue to, God knows what's going on and he knows our hearts. Um, but it is, it is good. And I don't know about you guys, but, you know, either, we're, we're in either one of three places as Christians. Well, as any, any, as any, any human. We're either in the midst of a storm or in the midst of a valley. Either we're coming out of the valley or we're going into the valley. So that's, that's kind of where I want to be today as far as, as the sermon. Because we need to be prepared for those days we have in the valley. Brian Freen Assurance sings, if it takes a valley, then a valley is what I'll take. If it takes a valley to bring me closer to Jesus, then the valley is what I need. But the, there's a song, I love music, there's a song Linda Randall sings, the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. And uh, she does, nobody, everybody... There's been people that have, have sung that song, but nobody does it justice like Linda Randall. 
So we're going to talk to you about a valley today, but we're going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And it's going to be a fairly long, I'm going to read the chapter, um, at least through 18, I think that's the end of the, of the chapter. And there's a lot of good nuggets in this chapter, and I'm not sure where God's going to have us camp today, but we're going to, we're going to see where he leads. So starting in verse 1 of chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians, it says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience, in the sight of God. But if our gospel is be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom God of this world, the God of this world, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves as your servants, ourselves your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Man, I love that. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the denying of the Lord Jesus, that the, the dying of the Lord Jesus, excuse me, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which are alive are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus may be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed, and therefore I have spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up also, us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sake, and the abundance of grace might through thanksgiving of many rebound the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but through our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not on the things which are seen, <clears throat> but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, eternal. Let's pray that God would bless the reading of his word. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we pray, Father, that as we open up your word, and the, the incorruptible, infallible, perfect word of God, I pray that you would bless the reading of your word. I pray that you would open the word so that we can just see what you have for us today. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. It starts off by saying, therefore, we, we have this ministry. What ministry? <laughs> what ministry? Well, if you look back in the previous chapter, it says, we are ministers of the New Testament, the new covenant, the new cutting. That word testament is the same word as cutting. And in the Old Testament, the way that, that two uh, leaders of families would make covenants with each other is, they, is one family would bring an offering, the other family would bring an offering, and they 
would take a knife and cut their arm on each on, on one side and the other the other, and then they would bound their hands together so the so the two bloods would uh, combine, and then together with their hands bound, they would walk a figure eight through the offerings, so that when we saw the cutting, we knew that there was a covenant. So if I made a covenant with Arthur, if something happened to Arthur, say somebody came in and roughed him up, it would be my duty to avenge Arthur. So that same word for cutting, covenant, is the same word we get for testament. Why? The Old Testament had a cutting, and that was circumcision. And the New Testament has a cutting, which is the cutting, the circumcision, not of the flesh, but of the heart. So we are ministers of the New Testament. That we faint not. What does fainting not look like? Well, let's get to the next verse. It says, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. That means we showed light on those things which are dishonest. Now, there are things that are dishonest that don't directly tie in to the Bible. We still are to shine the light on those things that are dishonest. Because my Bible says that the Lord delighteth in the truth. The next thing what feigning not looks like is not walking in craftiness. That means we are upright in our walk. We are, we are straightforward. What you see is what you get. And then it says not handling the word of God deceitfully. We need to read and interpret the word of God as it is. I don't need to add to it. I don't need to subtract from it. We know that there are certain things that are for those people that add to and take away from the word of God. See Revelation. Why, why is this important? It said, because our gospel is not hid. If our gospel be hid, it's not hid to us. If I hide my gospel, it's not going to affect you guys that are saved. It's going to affect those that are lost. The lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded their minds. Those that don't believe the God of this world who is Satan has blinded their eyes, blinded their minds, <clears throat> lest the glorious gospel light shine through them. So let your light shine. It goes back to this little, little song that we learned when we were growing up. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Right? We don't need to hide our light under a bushel. The Bible says that ye are the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world and ye are light to the world. The Bible says, so let your light shine upon men so that others will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We need more lights shine in, shown in a dark world. We need the light shine. There are corners here in Nelson County. We need the light shown. There are dark places in our, in our state, in our country, that we need the light shown. And you have it. You have it. Paul says, but we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. Man, we're not preaching us. We're not promoting us. We're, we're lifting up Christ. And Christ said, if I be lifted up, I will draw some men to me. Nope. I will draw a great number of men to me. Nope. He said, I will draw all men. Unto me. 
But we preach Christ Jesus, but we preach us as your servants. We are to serve. Ministers serve. Jesus did not come to be served. He came to serve. But then, then Paul says this, he says, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts. So Paul was saying, we were like you, but God has shined in our hearts, and we want that same light to shine in your heart. We were part of the lost, and now we are saved. You know, I don't know what, uh, you hear all the stuff that's going on today where you have racial stuff, and you have, you have uh, uh, economics, you have right and left, and you have those that, those that think they're guys that are not, and those that think they're girls that are not. You know, I don't know, I don't know what it's like to be a black man. I'm never going to know what it's like. I'm not going to know what it's like to be an Asian or a Hispanic or, or a woman or somebody that thinks they're one gender that rather than the other. I don't know what it's like. But you know, more importantly, I don't know what it's like to be you. And you don't know what it's like to be me. I don't know where, where we've come from and whoever's listening here. I don't know what it's like to be you, no matter what. Where? But you know what I do know? I do know what it's like to be a sinner. And you do too. I do know what it's like to look up with my feet mired in the clay and, and be hopeless. I do know what it's like to see that hand of God reach farther down than I can possibly reach up. And he picked me up out of that miry clay and he set my feet on the rock. I do know what it's like to be that. And if you're a Christian today, whether you're black, white, Hispanic, Asian, it doesn't matter. You know what it's like too. And then for those that don't, you can today know what it's like. Because whatever flavor your sin is, it's not bigger than God. Whatever flavor of the month, the sin that we choose to focus on is, you're not, it's not bigger than God. When Christ said it is finished, it was finished for sin once and for all, that his price was paid for, for your sin, for my sin. He didn't say for just some sin. It was for the sin of the whole world. So if you're out there and you're hopeless today, you're thinking, wow, my family doesn't love me. I, my, the, the, the community rejects me. Cry, there's a place for you. And God's, there's God's grace for you. There's a place for you. And God's grace is enough for you. And we as the church need to understand that there's a place for the lost. No matter what flavor of sin, there's a place. Because if God's grace is not good enough for the flavor of the month, sin, then it's not sufficient for me. But I don't know. God's grace is sufficient for me. And if his grace is sufficient for me, his grace is sufficient for anybody that walks through that door. For anybody you come across. I don't know what's going to unfold in our lives to this, the rest of this year or whatever. But I do know that there's going to be some valleys. There's going to be some hard times. You may be in a valley today. But we must plan for those. We will have to face a valley at some point. And we need to understand 
But suffering is going to happen. And there's suffering that, let's just be real, there's suffering that we get because we make poor choices. It's not the suffering I'm talking about here. When we make poor choices, my Bible says that God is not deceived, be not deceived, God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. There are consequences to our decisions. Does it mean that I'm a Christian, I make a mistake, I'm going to hell? No. Does it mean I can ask for forgiveness? Yes. Are there consequences on this earth for my decisions, even though I've been forgiven? Absolutely. Like, well, pastor, I don't understand. I'm a recovering drug addict. I, go, I, I get saved, and then I relapse, and I get AIDS. I ask for forgiveness, but I still have a disease. Real world, real world example. We need to understand that valleys are painful. When we suffer for Christ, the suffering always comes externally. Because the God of this world is not happy that you're doing what you're doing. And he can't steal your salvation. But he can try to stop your witness. He can try to steal your joy. He can try to steal your peace. Paul uses some pretty descriptive terms here. Troubled, every side, perplexed, persecuted, cast down. Talking about painful things here. Trouble means, the world means pressed or squeezed under pressure. Troubled, every side means that anywhere you look, there's trouble. You can't get away from it. Perplexed means to be at a loss, to wonder which way to go. Persecuted means hunted like an animal. And cast down means to be beaten down, cast underfoot. Paul knew what he was talking about because he's preaching from experience. I don't know about you where, you where you are in your Christian walk, but you might be speaking from experience too. My experience is that there's no greater hurt than church hurt, family hurt. Because you expect it from the lost. You expect it from this world. It blindsides you when it's, when it's, when it's your brother or sister. We need that they're painful. Valleys are painful. Valleys are also planned. There's, in these two verses, 10 and 11, they hinge on one word. Let me scroll back up here. Always bearing about in body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That... <clears throat> the life also of Jesus might be made manifest. For we live, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. That, always remember, that God knows what he's doing. And the valleys that we are allowed to go through are to bring us closer to him or to teach us a lesson. Not all sufferings are valleys, but all valleys, you're going to suffer a little bit. But my God can work all things together for good to them who love God and are the called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. I just checked that periodically to make sure that's still in the Bible. Because... It's an important one. But we need to understand that they're not just planned, they're a privilege. 
It is a privilege to suffer for Christ. When events came in Paul's life, he was able to respond to each all through the grace of God. He was distressed to be crushed under pressure, yet crushed not. He was in despair to be hopeless with no sense of confidence. But am I without hope? No. Destroyed, perished, destroyed, I'm perished, I'm hunted like an animal. But will I perish in the hunt? No. Is that even the trials of the valleys of life, I am still going to be able to stand because greater is he that is in me than he that is coming after me. And make no mistake, Satan's coming after you. Our adversary, the devil, walketh around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's waiting for you to get away from the herd. He's waiting for you to show a little limp in your step. We must be planning for our valleys. Hey, we need to prepare for the valleys before the time comes. If you're in the valley and you're trying to prepare for them, you're in for a rocky ride. Not an impossible ride, but a rocky ride. We must plan for the valleys. We must plan with a vision. We need to understand that God is in control, period. We have a vision of that. May not be my plan, it may be God's plan. Do you think Joseph planned to be sold? But God had a plan to save his people, and it required Joseph to be in Egypt. How is that going to happen? Well, let me just let his brother sell him to the... To the I keep wanting to say desperados because that's what the veggie tales say. <laughs> but yeah, sold him into slavery, had Potiphar, had Potiphar's wife accuse him and throw him in jail. Yet Joseph got me thinking, man, what's up with this God? But God had a plan. And his plan has timing. We also need to remember that we have a vision of the praise of God. When we face the valleys with genuine praise, genuine faith, then praise is the result. I saw a Facebook post, uh, Harold Vaughn. I share a lot of Harold Vaughn stuff. He's, he, he's on fire when we post stuff. And he said, it was, he said, it was the angel that came and got Peter out of prison. But it was the prayers that summoned the angel. Praise in the midst. You think Paul knew what he was talking about, being able to praise in the midst of a valley? Paul and Silas in the depths of prison got their praise on. It ought to be a goal in life that whenever circumstances are favorable or evil, that we will seek first and foremost the glory of God. Too often we forget that if it is happening, God has allowed it. Think about Job. I so cringe when I think that he might be saying, hey, have you ever considered my servant Michael? Don't consider me yet. But have you ever considered my servant? Insert your name. We need to understand that not only we have the vision of the plan of God, the praise of God, the power of God. He is well able to, with one snap of his mighty hand, remove you out of the situation. Just as he would have Jesus if Jesus would have said, take him. We 
understand that God's power and God's grace is sufficient for whatever you go through. You know, God never leaves you nor forsake you. He controls the load in the valley. He controls the load. You ever been hauling wood and you got your wheelbarrow and it's filling up with wood? Do you control the load if you're not putting the ones putting the stuff in? Nope, you're just going to, all right, I'm ready. Well, God's the one putting the stuff in. And we trust him that he will not give us any more than we can handle with him. Because not only is he putting the stuff in, when you get ready to carry it, he's going to say, slide over. You take one side, I'll take the other. And then if you still can't do it, he says, all right, you stand in the middle. I'll take both sides. And you just rely on him. And sometimes he says, why don't you get up in the world belt and I got you. Each one of those situations teaches you a lesson. You know what else teaches us a lesson? He lets us struggle on our own trying to get it. I don't care if you got one step or ten steps. And then you finally give out. He's right there. He controls the load in the valley. He controls the, how long the valley is. The length of the valley. Sometimes it doesn't seem that way. Sometimes it seems the valley just goes on and on and on. And on and on and on and on. But we are the only, God is the only one that can look and see beyond the valley. He knows. But not only we must plan for the valleys, we must plan with a vision, we must plan for the victory. Because we have victory beyond the grave. Oh, grave, where is thy? Victory, oh death, where is I stay? Right? I'm sure I butchered that one. But God knows. We don't have to worry about death because He overcame it. We don't have to worry about death because He won the victory. We can have the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Have you ever heard the saying, life is hard and then you die? That's the attitude many people have about life. However, when they take us out of this world, we will be living our best life now. Absent from the body is present with the Lord. We have victory beyond the grave. We can have victory Abounding in glory. <clears throat> I'm gonna go back to this verse 17 because this is one of my <clears throat> one of my favorite verses. For our light affliction, which is but a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight in glory. Our light afflictions, our suffering, our, the, the junk we have to go through is just but a moment. I mean, you, we've gone to funerals. We, go to, we seem like we go to more than we, than we like to. But how many times have you heard, life is a vapor, it's here today and vanished it away? It's like this. It's temporary. So if a life is temporary and it, it's like a vapor, what are the afflictions in our lives? They're smaller than a vapor. It says, but I like this, our light affliction. 
Because God knows. God knows that whatever we're going through is going to be light compared for the wages of sin. Compared to what Jesus went through in his scourging, his beating. Our light affliction is but a moment. We can have victory because this is going to be temporary. But also we can have victory, and I'm going to finish with this. You can have victory available right now by grace. We don't have to wait until we die to get raptured to, to enjoy the victory. Ours can be victory by faith right now in the person of the Lord Jesus. You don't have to get to heaven to enjoy the best God can give you. It can be yours right now. This verse gives us the secret to facing anything that life might throw at us. For the things that are seen are temporary, and the things which are not seen is eternal. So we're going to focus on the things which are not seen. What are some of the things that you can see? You can see a doctor's report. You can see your bank statement. You can see those unpaid bills. You can see a struggling relationship. You can see those things. Those things are temporary. What can we not see? I ain't mean, never seen heaven. I ain't never seen the Holy Spirit. I ain't never seen Jesus face to face. I've never seen his grace. I've seen some results of his grace, but I haven't seen his grace. So I don't know about you, but I'm going to focus on the things I can't see rather than the things I can see. Because I walk by faith and not by sight. And so should you. Because the faith is the evidence of things hoped for or the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things, what? Not seen. We certainly can see the evidence. So you're going to ask me, what about me, preacher? How can I face my valleys today? How can I walk in victory? I think it's the same for you as it was for Paul. The secret lies getting in your eyes off the size of your problem and getting them on the splendor of your heavenly get your eyes off your problem and set your eyes on Jesus turn your eyes upon Jesus let's pray the grace of Heavenly Father we thank you for this day we thank you for everything that you have done and that you are doing and Father we just want to lift you up we want to praise you we want to honor you we want to, Father, we just want to surrender to you because you are worthy. You are worthy of our praise. And Father, help us. Help us to face the valleys as Christian would face valleys with our eyes focused on you and not our problems. Father, help us to change our focus. Help us to start today if we haven't already been doing that. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We're going to finish with a song today. And it is. Three forty. And I think we sang the song either last week or it, but it, it's appropriate for the to finish up with it this week.
is turn your eyes upon Jesus. We'll sing it twice. Stand if you're able. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Live full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. One more time. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Live full in his wonderful faith. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grave. Father, I pray that all hearts are clear. I pray that we take the name of Jesus with us to a lost and dying world. Father, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Don't forget, we have a business meeting right after the service. For those, make sure you hug the necks of those that are headed out, and then we'll get started. God bless you guys. Have a great, great day.